Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be covering the developments or lack thereof in the Russian Zaporizhia offensive. We'll cover what's going on around Bakhmut and uh, Klitschivka and Solidar, and what you guys all clicked on, the um, Ukraine breaking the defense in the Svatova area. There's been a lot of reports coming out around this area. They vary from Ukraine has completely taken Novosilivsky, secured the road to Volodymyrivka, and has gotten uh, the complete high ground advantage around Kuzemivka. And some say that Russia has just completely abandoned the settlement. Some are also saying this, and I think it's probably the most likely, it's that uh, Russia is now holding defense in the eastern part of the settlement. I think that's more likely because Russia sent reinforcements here, and they wouldn't have sent it here if they just like completely fell out. That's not the right word. If they retreated. But basically, for the past few weeks, Russia had been expending a ton of resources doing big attacks into Novosilivske. Because as you can see from, from kind of the map I'm using, let me pull up the topographic map really quick. You can see that Kuzemivka is a lot lower elevated. It goes down about 50 meters from Novosilivske. So it was vital that Russia controlled Novosilivske so they can keep the Ukrainians off of the high ground and deal with counterfire of artillery better. Ukraine liberated Novosilivske a lot of times and then Russia took it back. But in this most recent wave of assaults, Ukraine just stepped back a bit and let Russia do counterattacks over and over again. And it seems like that finally dried up their supply of men and Ukraine was able to push back in and take Novosilivske. Now what's different about this from the other time is that Ukraine is actually inside of the settlement now. Since the defense is being held in the eastern area. And Russia does not want to give up this settlement for two reasons and I'll explain the second one later. They sent a big reinforcement in to try to stop the, the advance here. Now the main reason they don't want to lose the settlement is because it's the main linchpin of defense in the whole like um, center spot of an area. Since Ukraine had uh, Kolomichiha and Pidkwichvansk are actually in a gray zone right now. Their status is sort of unconfirmed, but for this explanation, I'm going to assume that they are liberated, then I'll give one saying if they're still under Russian control. With Ukraine taking Kuzemivka, they can use their positions in Yahidne and the other road to Volodymyrivka to fully take out that settlement. And basically, they're going to try to push Russia up to the Kobilka River along Nola Novotarasivka, Orobotnivka, and Nalhudne. There are a couple places where Russia can hold defense in this area this high ground right here and a small canal that leads to Nahulne. but other than that this area isn't too geographically friendly to the russians they may be able to push directly up to Svatova from this area and if pidhuichansk is taken krivio shivka isn't going to last because they're surrounded from all three sides but let's say for a second let's get rid of this line Let's say for a second that Kolomichiha and Pidkwichansk aren't liberated. With their new positions in Kuzemivka, they're going to do the same thing with Volodymyrivka from the two sides. And using the positions that they have on the PO7 highway, they're just going to capture the settlements in a reverse order than how they did if they did actually liberate them. So they use the pressure from pushing up to the Kobilka River to flank Krivyoshivka, and then from there just keep flanking the new stuff until Kolomichiha has to retreat. It's going to be a little more time consuming and costly, which will give Russia a bit more time to fortify the areas nearby, but this is going to open up direct access to Svatova in the long term. So yeah, that's what we got there. Let's transition down to Bakhmut. There's been no real changes of movement in Solidar. The Ukrainian defense line has pretty much stabilized. It's along the Bakhmutka River, and Krasnohora and Krasnopolivka are still standing, even though the battles are going to pretty tense in Krasnohorovka. The main developments are happening towards the south by Klitschivka. Some people are saying that the entirety of Klitschivka has been captured. Some are also saying that only about half of it has been taken. But what everyone agrees on is that Ukraine still controls the heavily fortified high ground above it. Russia has Russia had basically bypassed and flanked the city to try to push up into Ivanivske to cut supply from uh, Kostyantinivka. The extent of how far they pushed isn't known, but it's unlikely that they'll make it too far. Russia is pretty much surrounded by the Donetsk Canal now on the other side which has stopped their advance for a really long time so far so this gives them about a like a two with a three kilometer area where they can attack through ukraine's main goal right here is just to keep them in between ivanivske and this little hill area as long as they can do that supply to bakhmut through this path should be pretty much secure a lot of people are worried that if uh russia gains control of krasnohora and then paraskovivka the the main road of supply into Bakhmut, which is which goes through uh, Sloviansk, will be cut, and this is getting kind of dangerous because if they do take Ivanivske, that will effectively cut most supply routes into Bakhmut, except for one, which I think most people overlooked. There's a path that goes through the highway from Sloviansk to Bakhmut. It goes down along the Donetsk Canal and then heads into Chasiv Yar and heads in through the back of Bakhmut. 
Russia won't have fire control over this because there is a big hill right here by Chasi Vyar, and so even if those two areas are cut, supply to Bakhmut will still be possible. They're going to have to fight their way up the hills in order to make it through there, so let's pop up in the topographic map. It's about it's about 50 meters of difference. And to the Americans, that's about 164 feet, and to the real Americans like me, that's 647 cheeseburgers by 12 Iraqi oil barrels squared. And Chasi Vyar has been pretty well fortified because in the, especially in the early days of the Bahamut campaign, Ukraine was fortifying the settlements nearby to prepare for if the settlement did fall. But right now, it, this isn't a major concern because Russia is still going to have to push through a lot of positions when they are constricted by the Donetsk Canal. Satellite map shows that it's just a ton of fields. It's a nice forest right here. What makes it especially hard is that the area that goes uphill right along here is a forest. So this area... Even if they push north of Klishchivka into the Bakhmut area, pushing through this is going to be basically impossible. There's a nice tree belt and forest which can halt advances. There's more tree belts along here. And there's, um, what's in here? I don't know what this is, actually. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's what we got right here. And even if Russia does take Ivanivske, it's not going to be pretty for them. Because Ukraine still has the supply route, so let's say they do take Ivanivske. The area that they need to push up through to actually cut supply is mostly surrounded- Hang on, let me get like a new color or something. Mostly surrounded by forests that can eat assaults pretty well. And they're going to have to go uphill pretty hard, which is not going to be good for them. Right now, the main thing that Ukraine is worried about is Russia even- Hang on, let me- This is cluttered. The main thing that Ukraine is worried about is Russia pushing far enough to gain fire control over the road into here. If they do that, it's going to be a bit of a pickle, but it won't be a major problem because they still have the main supply road through here, and then, and then they have the redundant sort of backup road that goes through Chasi Vyar. And that's mainly what we got there. I think defense is pretty much holding in this ridge, and it's unclear if Klish Klishchivka has been fully taken as well. So yeah, now let's get into the... Uh, a lack of an offensive in the Zaporizhia region. Before I explain this situation, um, I'm just gonna say Russia has claimed to have captured this much stuff. And what I'm about to tell you is probably going to make that look kind of sad. Orihiv is the main defense stronghold in this area. It controls supply to most of the front in this segment. Basically, the Zaporizhia front has four big strongholds. Orihiv, Huliapole, Velika Novosilka, and Vuladar. These all control supply to their respective re regions, and the defense in these areas mostly holds the front together. Russia went to attack Orihiv recently. It's unclear whether they were trying to draw Ukrainian troops away from other regions, or if they were actually trying to get some sort of breakthrough around here. Most of the reports I've seen say that there's not enough equipment and men here for a serious breakthrough, and it seems like this is more of a larger scale positional fight than an actual offensive. There are two places where Russia has made gains here, but it's really not that impressive. Before this offensive, neither side maintained a permanent presence in Lobkove, and this is mainly because it's in the low ground. If we open the topographic, I, I wish this map was better. I wish it had like colors and stuff. I mean, if I zoom out, it has colors. But, like, it, it, it's just, it sucks, alright, whatever. Basically, as you can see, there's about, like, a 30-40 meter increase right here, and about a 50 meter decline from the Russian position. So, holding Lopkove was really not in the Ukrainian self-interest, so Russia taking this really wasn't that impressive. It seems like they've captured the city, but it doesn't necessarily matter that much. The main Ukrainian positions in this area are by Stepove, and defense is holding here pretty well. Russia also claimed that they took over Kamyansky. However, it's been confirmed that fights are still ongoing, and it's unlikely that this defense is going to break. So that's the main segment where Russia's made gains. Over here, Bilohirya was another gray zone. It's on effectively the same elevation as Mal Malatokmaichka, which is which is much better defended, and it has just stronger fortifications in the settlement. And Ukraine just really didn't see the point in trying to keep Bilohirya. Editing me here, you could tell in that last sentence I wasn't confident, but that was because because I forgot one thing. Bilohirya is in direct fire control of Malatokmaichka, so Ukraine can basically see every assault coming from there, and they have control into the or fire control into the city. To tell settlement uh, above this line of settlements, Ukraine has mostly been holding uh, defense in the fields above this hill. It's only about 30 meters, but 30 meters is bigger than you'd think. Just like how I keep telling myself, five inches is bigger than you'd think. So overall, it's unlikely that this progress is going to lead to any sort of big breakthrough at Orihiv that leads to some like D3 Michael LeBron hit in the back in Bakhmut, anything like that. And overall, I just don't really see the point of why Russia is trying to push up to Zaporizhia. I think in the most optimistic scenario, a big assault happens in Orihiv and Russia completely takes it over and 
this becomes the new line hardly improving russia's position at all just forcing more ukrainian troops into this area so we're just gonna have to see what goes on there but right now it's not looking like much progress is going on well the raw recording of this is 25 minutes long so i'm not excited but hopefully this video is informative all right see you guys later all right if you made it this far you're a real one sorry that the uploads haven't been as frequent i've been hard at work trying to finish up my album and i've been busy with school and stuff and you know whatever but my album it's going to come out on tuesday the 24th I'm gonna let my channel members hear it first because I'm a dick and I like money. But I'll release it to everyone else like two weeks after or whatever. Most of you probably don't care. And speaking of the channel members, thank you to Gene Helfrich, Steve Grun, Butleresque, David Appel, Delo Mathatas, Phil Martin, Evie Fong, Robert Jenkins, Richard Quadri, Focus Focus 100, Gaz B, Javette Witter, Russell Whiskey, Evan Shin, Mr. Walkman, Ry Jones, Chaspex, Smile Daydream, and a special thanks to my third tier members, Ashley C137, Joel Rando, Mike Q, Joe Sauer, PG, JG Bashlow, Maxim Zavarshinsky, Jane Dungu, Matthew Barnes, and Jacob Munch. See you guys later.